In this presentation, we'll take a look at some of our standard financial statement reports, including the balance sheet and income statement and how to customize them for our not-for-profit organization. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company or not-for-profit organization dashboard. Now we here are gonna be looking at the end result having already populated the information. Since you're starting off the information, you may want to go then into the test drive file instead. And the test drive file is for the company of Craig's Design and Landscaping. It will not have the same numbers in there, but it will have some numbers that will be populated so you could practice navigating within it. You could find it by searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. Back to our not-for-profit, let's take a look at Excel to see what our objective will be. Now we're gonna be considering the end result, the reports that we will be banking. For a standard company, uh, for a company type of file and not for a not-for-profit, we would have a standard income statement and balance sheet being our major two reports that we would be constructing with the data input. Note that if for a not-for-profit, we're gonna name them differently, but they're gonna be very similar in nature. So we're gonna have a uh, statement of uh, financial position and a statement of activities. The statement of financial position basically being a balance sheet report, so it's gonna be pretty, pretty similar, pretty much the same thing as a balance sheet report, right? We got the assets, then we're gonna have the liabilities. The major difference in terms of the terminology, besides the name being a bit different here, is gonna be, of course, the uh, the equity section. And that's gonna be similar. You can think about this for different types of organizations being different as well. Sole proprietorship, it might be called sole, sole owner's equity. If it's a partnership, it might be called partner's equity. If it's a corporation, it, it might be called stockholder's equity and they all have kind of different challenges with them. Here, it's gonna be called net assets uh, to not indicate basically a profit, I, I guess is the assumption, but net assets makes sense, of course, because net assets, you could think of the accounting equation being in the format of net assets being kind of like the book value of the company, assets minus liabilities, giving us uh, the net assets, because that's kind of like the value of the company, which we then need to break out to these two categories, which we'll discuss as we go through the course, and that's going to be with donor restrictions and without donor restrictions. So that's kind of the challenge on the statement of financial positions. And then there's a few more challenges on the statement of activities, which is basically the income statement type of report. And we talked about them briefly before. The income statement is performance. So we're talking about how did we do over time. And usually when we think about that from a for-profit, we're thinking how did we do from a revenue perspective, you know, in the generation of revenue. But here, because of that different perspective, we're thinking about how did we do in kind of cash flow and being able to apply our resources to the, the items that we're supposed to be applying them to, which in essence are the programs. So we've got revenue and expenses, same format that we would expect to have, giving us net income, but now the term isn't gonna be called net income, it's gonna be called increase in net assets. So notice some of those terminology things are gonna be a bit of a challenge for us in QuickBooks uh, Online, we'll have to basically think about how we're gonna uh, deal with those and customize our reports for it. We also may have to break out between items with restrictions and without restrictions. And we'll talk about that. That's gonna be another challenge, which again, we'll use the class tracking tool for. We'll also be needing to break out our expenses by what they're used for in this case, which again is different because in a for-profit, they're used for profit. <laughs> Right? That's why we have expenses to help generate revenue here. We got by program and then the management in general and the fundraising. And then we also need them by function. So we have another report up top. So let's take a look at our financials in, in QuickBooks then. So if I go back onto the reports on the left-hand side, we're gonna go to the reports on the left-hand side. We'll be jumping to the financial statements, uh, the financials pretty much every time. Every time we do a transaction, we'll consider, okay, what's the effect on the financial statements. So we'll spend a lot of time with our standard financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the profit and loss. Let's open them now. So we're gonna go into the reports. Now they're gonna be up top generally in the favorite reports. They're favorites because they have a little star next to them. So they have a star next to them. And by default, those ones already have a star next to it. So if you were to find them, they're gonna be down here in the business overview. And there's the one with the star right there. And there's the profit and loss by class. It has a star and the profit and loss. Therefore, they're up top where they should be, really, because we're, we're gonna, these are the major financial statements, right? So then let's go into the balance sheet. Let's open up the balance sheet here. And here is our balance sheet. Now, we're going to be working in the month of January. So I'm going to change the date from 010120 to uh, 013120. 
and that's how we're going to change the date the month of january it may be different in craig's craig's design work with whatever date is there so you can populate your reports then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do something that we we're going to do a lot in the course and that's going to be to copy or duplicate the tab to be able to be working on different reports at the same time great tool to have with quickbooks online and that is you're going to go and hover over the tab up top right click on that tab and then duplicate that tab so hover over it right click duplicate that will open up another tab that will have the information in it as well and that way we can jump back and forth i can have the balance sheet then on this side and then i can go back to the left hand side and open up another report such as the income statement or p and l profit and loss so here's our balance sheet let's go back to the tab to the left then and open up the profit and loss report I'm going to go down to the reports again so i'm going to the reports on the left hand side and then we're going to be opening up our uh, p and l the profit and loss also a favorite report so we're going to open up the profit and loss you might hear it termed as p and l profit and loss income statement and then of course for not for profit it's going to be the statement of activity so these are the two major reports that we're going to basically adjust to fit our not for profit organization needs and one of the adjustments will of course be the name of of the of the not-for-profit uh, organization so let's put this uh, january 1st through 013120 so we'll make it for the month of january as well there's our not-for-profit there's our income statement now i'm going to go back up top i'm going to right click on this tab and duplicate this report again so i'm going to duplicate this report so now we have the balance sheet we're going to have the profit and loss and then we can do stuff on the left hand side this is how i would normally uh, tell you to work in your in your system because this allows you to do the data input over here jump to the financial statements refresh the financial statements and see the effect on the financials the more you do that the better idea you get of, of what's actually happening the more you're engaged the more your mind is involved as you work through it the less likely you're to e able to make a mistake and the more you'll be able to pick up it's just easy it's funner to do that way if you know what the data input is and you know the effect on the financial statements and then you can go to the financial statements and look at what has happened as you enter the data uh, it's also a more engaging activity let's go back over to the balance sheet now i'm going to close up the hamburger here's the hamburger over here note that the financial statements of a course of our, our our end result this is what we're basically creating now i'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and i'm going to use my little scroll bar over here and i am using windows to to do this a windows computer so i'm going to scroll up and this is going to go into uh 125 so i, I scrolled up and i'm zoomed in when you're on the reports right here that's zooming in feature great feature to have when you're not on the reports and you're doing data input into forms you pretty much want it on hundred percent otherwise quickbooks online could do some funny some funny things but it's a great tool for the reports now when we look at the balance sheet note that uh, we, we can change the name here that's one thing we'll change and we can customize this report we see that the balance sheet has just like a for-profit assets liabilities and equity I'm closing up the little triangle so you can see the bare bones of it assets liabilities and equity note we have some issues with the name so the equity down here uh, we would like to call it net assets for for purposes of QuickBooks can't really change it here because this is part of the the, uh, the programming in the system to have it in this format the name we can change up top but this is going to be one of those things that's kind of difficult to change because it's part of just the format of uh, of QuickBooks we'll talk more about that at the end of the at the end when we when we format these reports and we'll do a lot more formatting of them but just to take a look at the balance sheet if you if you open up the balance sheet then you've got the the current assets and uh, the fixed assets if we open up the current assets then we've got our bank accounts and so on and our accounts receivable and then the other current assets that uh, would be similar to a a for-profit organization the fixed assets uh depreciable assets being here then we have the liabilities and again liabilities pretty straightforward liabilities uh similar to a for-profit organization something that we owe to a third party outside the organization and like we say the difference is the equity section so you can't really change the the name of the equity but you can change the equity type of accounts from something like a retained earnings or capital account to the net assets restricted or unrestricted so we'll make some adjustments uh, to to this report and we'll see we'll see that in a second here and then the P&L if we go to the P&L the profit and loss this is going to be let's close up the hamburger a bit more of the challenging reports because we got to record the classes here so if i was to close up the this item and this item we have once again income and expenses 
That's the bare bones of an income statement. Uh, and obviously we would change the name to the statement of activities for a for-profit. We can do that. That's not a problem and save that report. Uh, and then we have the income and expenses. What we can't really change down here is the net income line, which a not-for-profit calls its change in net assets. Uh, because this is, again, not a, it's not an adjustable field here. We can do those adjustments in uh, Excel. It's not too difficult to do, and we'll show you how to do that at the end of the, of, the, um, of the course. We'll get into that at the end, but just here's the major form that we'll be taking a look at. This is what you would normally see in a for-profit, just one line here saying income minus expenses in a for-profit type of organization. Gives you your net income. It all has the same goal of revenue generation in a for-profit. In the not-for-profit, though, we want to break this out, as we saw over here, we want to break this out into our two columns, which are restricted and non-restricted items, and then the total. So for that, we're going to use our classes. So I'm going to go up top, and we're actually going to be using our classes. So I'm, I'm going to select this little drop-down and open up classes, and then run that report. And that's what's going to give us this added dimension and now we've got a bunch of classes here because we're going to have the categories of the restricted items. So in essence, we've got all the categories of the restricted items and then uh, the total restricted items here. And then we've got all the categories of the unrestricted items and the unrestricted items here and then the total. So this classes feature is what's going to add to us. It's going to give us that added dimension that we can then break out this information in this, in, in this kind, of, kind of format. So we'll talk more about that uh, as we go. That's going to be one of the major tools that, that we will use. Also note, this will allow us to go back and forth and add uh, a report that's going to be reported by, by um, function for the expenses as, as well as by nature for the expenses. So these two reports, again, will break this out using the classes feature. Now, we also might want more information on on uh, the restricted items, the types of restrictions, which we can use classes to do. So I'll show you how to do classes to do that. Or we can also run this report by uh, customer and run this report. So I'm hitting the drop down. I'm going to run it by customer. And then we can, and this could be another way that we can track basically, uh, this will be using a job type feature to track the restricted items. So this is, this is kind of the confusing thing. This is the new, the new thing that we're gonna use this other dimension to figure out this, these reports, the job costing features and the, uh, the job cost kind of features that I would call them a job cost type of feature and the classes feature to, to, track, the, to track this information and give us the more detailed reports. Okay, so also note, I'm gonna to go to the tab to the, to the left now that if we go down to the reports again, as we make these reports, we can then customize these reports. So I can customize these reports. And once we have created this, I'm gonna hold down control and scroll down to get back to 100%. So once we have created these reports, then we can, we can make them standardized. So I have them down here, statement of uh, financial position. I could simply open up the statement of financial position from the custom reports. And then the name is already there at the statement of financial position and all the formatting that we can do within QuickBooks is already there. We can't do all the formatting. Notice down here, I, I changed the, the names of the accounts, but I can't change something like the equity up here. There's some things that I can't change within QuickBooks. They're not the end of the world. We just have to, you, know, you gotta recognize that QuickBooks has some terminology that will not be uh, exactly transferable to the not-for-profit, and it is what it is. Now, you can change it pretty easily by simply exporting it to Excel and changing it which without too much added work, and we'll show you how to do that. So we'll go and, and see what, what uh, at the end of the course, we'll generate the reports, and we'll see what, what QuickBooks can generate and what you can give out there, and then what you can do with some formatting uh, if you put it into Excel and just do some adjustments and how you might present this information as well. So we'll get into the, the formatting, the, presentate, the presentation, how to give the reports to, to individuals, uh, and how you can distribute them at the end of the practice problem. So that's gonna be this item. And if you go back back to the reports then, uh, we, have our, we have our other forms as well, the statement of activities and uh, the, the restricted net assets. So we have all these reports that you can then save. So once we've customized them, we'll show you how to save them as, uh, as we go as well. Now to generate these reports, we're gonna be using, of course, these forms. 
these forms, uh, mainly like an invoice type form, which we'll customize and a sales receipt type form, deposit type forms, and expense and check forms, as well as bills. These are the things that typically are, are gonna be the building blocks. These are the things that create the actual journal entries that will end up in the end result of the profit and loss or the, and the balance sheet, the end result of the financial statements. So every time we enter something like this, a bill, an invoice and whatnot, we wanna think about what's the effect on the financial statements so we can get an idea of what that relationship is. And that's how we'll, we'll construct the financial statements in a step-by-step -step process, seeing these forms and considering the journal entry as well, jumping over to Excel and figuring out, okay, what are the actual accounts that are affected in just basically a journal entry type format? What are the increases and decreases? We won't talk about debits and credits too much, but we'll just say, hey, this account's affected, that account's affected, you know, debit and credit increase and decrease to the account. That's what's happening when we do these forms. And then you can see that on then the financial statements and then drill back from the financial statements back to the source document to get a, a really good understanding of what is happening. So that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.